Yeah. We hear better. We so. we hear, but yeah, not at the level of a uh, voice in the in the. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put my face right in. <laughs> so hopefully now you can see a vague outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to start just by giving you a quick introduction to this small talk, which may be some of you who have seen through, some of you will find interesting. And then I'll get on to what this talk is actually about, which is the pragmatic small talk implementation that we now have. So, if I can have the next slide. The small talk family dates back to around 1967, I guess. Maybe not probably correct me on this. For the first initial thoughts on the subject. Uh, the final version of the standard was really worked out in 1980. It's the language that I guess all the new step developers are familiar with. Because it's a language that inspired the creation of the objective C. But there are lots of other branches in this family that itself was. Uh, sorry, people are looking at it, we can't hear it. Self was a version of small talk that kept the same sort of syntax for the rid of classes, and it became very, uh, very simple as a language that was really nothing much. That was fixed in the behavior of the language, everything else could be added uh, as part of the library. And self has one very popular descendant, which is JavaScript. JavaScript inherits most of the semantics from self, but it adds a number of my current scummy syntax on top of that a few really weird foreign capable behaviors that have never tried implementing JavaScript. Some of the things specification make you scratch your head onto what they were smoking. Um, if I can move on to the next slide. So, in small talk, there are basically two main bits of sentence. There's assignment, which uses this colony thing. So you have a variable on the left and then some expression on the right. I guess we're all familiar with assignment in various programming languages, and that's any ML program is required in those things. Um, and the other thing is message sending. And this looks exactly like message sending in Objective-C, which is not a mechanism of Objective-C, which is not a sense. So the only difference is there are no square brackets, because the square brackets in Objective-C are there to distinguish between C-like syntax and syntax, while it's all on the everything is all on the syntax. So you have three types of message. You have numeric uh, messages, which are just a message name containing the arguments. Messages with one parameter. Messages with multiple parameters, which have a bit of this vector in between uh, each of the components. And I guess no one's confused or surprised by this syntax. No? Okay, so if we can move on to the next slide. The flow control. Sorry, did someone speak? Yeah, I just that we were on the flow control side. Okay. So this is what that meant was called to what was the last to break away from Objective C slightly because in Objective C you had loads of local control statements, you'll see that in the statements, wild notes, more notes, all that kind of stuff. And in small talk, there are no flow control statements on that message center. All you can do um, to have conditional execution to have loops, all of this is implemented in terms of message center. So if you want to have something that looks like an if statement, then you just have a Boolean object, you set this in true statement, true message, and as an argument to that, you have a block or a closure. So there's an example here on the slide which is sending a Boolean object in through a false message. And the bits and square brackets there are block expressions. So these are just another kind of 
literal, like not the literal, so straight literals that you get in Objective C. They're just um, turned into an object when either runs. And this object is put in block class and it responds to a value message. So if you look at the display, the, the, the bottom of the side, you can see how you can use this to implement something like a while loop. So this would be a method that would be implemented on the block closure object itself, which is a while true method, uh, which takes the loop body as an argument and it just returns the result of first sending the value message to itself and then sending an if true message to the result of that with uh, the loop body. So this looks kind of complicated. It's basically a definition of while the loop and then in terms of an deductive statement with just a single and it's just there, I guess I'm confused to keep your hands, it's just not a problem that you can just rid of for each load process or without needing to have anything actually in the matter of the Boolean thing, that's actually not any kind of magic, there's no special one, there is a special coding client, that's just optimization, there doesn't need to be a special coding client to recognize messages as Boolean objects. So all you need is two subclasses is this Boolean class, a true class, and a false class. That true class implements this if true message by sending a value message to the argument. And the false one implements it by doing nothing. So then if you want to do any kind of conditional, you get a, mes a method that returns an instance either true or false. And then all of this conditional flow control works. And it's kind of, if you've used this, this is kind of the exact opposite of this. This defines all of this kind of message sending into that the functions and uh, small talk is exactly as expressive, but it works from the opposite end, defining the kind of things that you get free in this in terms of the kind of things that you would define yourself in this. So, next slide, please. Thank you. So Objective-C, I guess, is a language that most people in this room are familiar with. Can I just have a show of hands? Is there anyone here who's not used Objective-C? Okay, one person. Um, so Objective-C is basically the bastard offspring of C and Smalltalk. It's what you try and get if you squish C and Smalltalk together into a single language. It's really easy for C programmers to learn because it's basically half a dozen syntactic extensions. And it's really easy for small talk programmers to learn because it's basically just as ugly C syntax scattered over their small talk programs. But it's not small talk. It, it has not object type, which small talk does. Small talk is a pure object oriented language. It has nothing which is not an object. Objective-C has these primitive flow control structures which can't be replaced by the user. Um, and small talk doesn't, it just has the uh, message sending primitive. And Objective-C is a little bit faster than small talk. Small talk, the reason Objective-C was created was that small talk was too slow for use on the really cheap machines that were available in the early 80s. I guess now that's less of a problem because pocket calculators are faster than the machines that were the high end workstations when small talk was created. But it's still an advantage. If you've got something that's processor intensive, Objective C is, I was going to say it's faster, it is possible to write code in Objective C that's possible, but it's faster because it's small talk. It's also possible to write really slow code, you can use a stupid algorithm and you get slower code in Objective C using a sense of power and get writing code in small talk. So uh, one of the examples I have for that is how the Fibonacci sequence. And I have an implementation in Smalltalk which uses a sensible loop-based implementation and a version in uh, Objective-C which uses the naive branching recursively calculating each subtree version. And by the time you get to about the 20th Fibonacci number, the uh, 
There's also the word command line tool, ETLC, which might make dynamic language compiler, which is a small compiler driver for uh, compiling and running language in your programs. And this does a few little bits of syntax sugar, so it can strip out the uh, hash estimation mark line at the top of the file. So you can use this uh, to run shell scripts in small talk using the uh, that frameworks and it supports loading bundles so you can put it in a dot app bundle it does a little bit of hacking to make the main bundle um, method for NS bundle return the bundle that was passed and so we now have the ability to write applications purely in small talk with no need to compile them at all you just distribute the dot app bundle and as long as language is in small talk and DLC are installed on the typing machine you can just double click on the workspace or open the window and then it'll just work. So, next slide, please. So, one of the aims for this was to try and keep it small because small is easy to debug and easy to test and easy hopefully for other people to understand. And this slide, assuming that what you see and what I see have been kept in sync, this slide should be showing you exactly how big this is. So, if I start at the bottom, the total amount of code produced there as part of this whole thing, so language kits for all the runtime support, is just under a thousand time code. And for that in perspective, the new object of C runtime library is about 1200 times code. So, this Compiler, all the new stuff is less code than we get in heritage with the objects you have done. So it's kind of small. Uh, the small talk specific bit is under a thousand lines code that's including parts of the runtime or by almost a third of that.
module structures that the runtime library understands and expects to get from the code that's generated from Objective-C. So there's no virtual machine, there's no bridging layer, there's no overhead for sending messages from Objective-C to Smalltalk or from Smalltalk to Objective-C. There's just a really small runtime layer. Um, next slide, please. So a lot of people who have asked uh, when I go to all this tour, I keep saying never. And the reason for this is that a lot of the way it works is by using the type selector information that the GNU runtime has, the Mali runtime has, and the Apple runtime doesn't have. So with the GNU runtime, every selector has a name and a type associated with that. And you can get this information really easily at runtime. You can uh, use all the nice introspection stuff to find out exactly what types a method expects. So in small talk, everything is an object, and that's fine. You can just pass objects around between small talk methods, and that's great. But often, when you're calling objects with decode, then one or more of the parameters you want to pass will be an integer or structure or something like that. So all integer types are boxed as this special small int primitive in uh, language kit. And this is a sort of pseudo object which is um, is basically an integer that's stored in pointer. So the least significant bit is set to one. And when you want to perform any arithmetic with it, you just right shift it one, do the arithmetic, and then shift it and <coughs> And all of those methods are implemented as very short C functions that compile to LLB and bit code. And then when you want to perform any of those operations, the compiler just generates calls to those functions and then LLB and inlines them before code generation. For more complex types like structures, they're all boxed in the sub like the net and stuff like that. And then we use standard methods like uh, in value or rect value, point value, set to whatever the object is, uh, together as well. Pass, for example, a string to some of the things back to an integer. Uh, Floating point when you can find a menu, but it's just not like And the kind of looks at the I know this is an object, so to unbox it, I send a new value message. And to do that, as long as the object walks, uh, as long as the object implements a new value method that returns an int, then it'll all work. So you can use strings and integers and stuff all interchangeably and automatically. Uh, next one, please. So there are a couple of things that were difficult about implementing Smalltalk uh, with the native compiler using the runtime. And the first one of these is blocks. Smalltalk uses blocks everywhere. They're first class objects and they need to be really fast because pretty much everything you do in Smalltalk involves blocks. And the other one is non-local returns. And these are a really messy feature of Smalltalk where if you have a return statement in a block, then when it's encountered, the method where the block was declared returns, so you need to do some stack unwinding. And I'll talk just quickly about each of those if I can have the next slide. So this little code snippet is how you perform a math operation in pragmatic small talk. This array, by the way, is an NS array. We've got certain categories on NS array which implement some of these methods. And that's what the small talk support library that I listed on the light count slide was all about. So this takes a block which takes one argument as its argument. And it sends it to message. It sends it a value message for each um, entry in the array in turn. And then it creates a new array which takes the result of this block um, as a translation. So, well, that's not so interesting. The problem is that when you're doing this kind of thing a lot, you need to be able to create four blocks fast. And if we had to do a heap allocation every single time this happened, 
that would be really painful. So every time you create a block later on, it's compiled to a function, and the function expects the block as its first argument, and that's just like any other method that I'll take from C. So the, the, the block object itself we allocate on the stack, and that's fine. And we can also put on the stack a context object which stores all of the locals. And I can have the next slide. The reason that becomes a problem is that now you have an object which someone might want to retain allocated on the stack. So what happens if you pass a block as an argument to a method and the receiver says, okay, I'm going to store that in an instance variable now, or maybe you just store it in the array or something. And then your method returns, and that frame is popped off the stack, and the next time you try and use it, you just erase it from a random stack location that's now not containing your object. So that's kind of a problem. Um, and the solution to that is now, whenever you send a retain message to the block object, uh, the block is copied immediately. But if you remember from the last slide, the block itself is a stateless object. All it does is have a point to the context. The context is where all of the variables are stored. So we do some ISIS swizzling there so the stack block context, which is the class of the context allocated on the stack, is changed. And a pointer to the block object is stored somewhere else on the stack. Then when this node returns, the block context is promoted onto the heap and it all keeps working. So as long as variables are being accessed on the stack, they're local, they're very fast. And when you move them off the stack, then um, they slow down. That only happens when you send a retain message to the block. So it's still quite cheap. And next slide, please. So the other difficult thing I mentioned was these non local returns. So you can often see methods like this when you have some guards and flaws where you have a condition which shouldn't be true or should be true. You send it a true message and then you return it. So this would be just like an objective C you said, if some condition return true. And that's fine an objective C because all of those statements are all set in context. But in small talk, this return true statement that acts in simple when when means return and it's in most confusing methods. Um, this return true statement should return from the method, not just from the block. So the way we can do that is to have a new exception handling personality function, which is part of the language key runtime. So with the new zero cost exception handling APIs that are appearing in most student like systems now, and they originally came from the table in more places when they were class forms in there. Um, they let you associate a personality function with every stack frame. This is just stored in the debugging metadata that's imitated in the object code. And this is called by the online community <laughs> and it says, this is some exception pointer. Unwind this stack for this frame and if this, uh, if this exception should be handled by this frame, then handle it correctly. And that's all this new function does. We just define a new kind of exception, which is only understood by small talk code. And this is used to handle our local returns. And we can still catch uh, Objective C exceptions by using small talk style exception handling where we send to the on exception message to the block. Uh, it's non exception do message, so it takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the exception, the second one is the name of the block. It, it is a block that's not sorry. And if an exception happens while well, executing the block that's the receiver, then it invokes the block that's the exception handling. So the downside of this non local return approach is that it's really slow. But the upside is that it's only slow when you actually use it. And most code tends to use this kind of thing for the same sort of thing you use exceptions for using the guard clauses and other things that are in the local very often. So next slide please. So that's probably just enough detail about the language implementation to really confuse. Right now, the more 
before I ask the questions, a uh, few people who I should mention have worked on this. Obviously, I've been doing some work on this. I wrote the initial uh, code generator, the Atlantic Text Tree, and a really, really bad small talk parser, which may be a bit repeatedly. Uh, Thrust has written small talk parsers now, which actually works, which is a massive improvement. Gunther's uh, has written Test Suite. Bugs. Nicholas has been writing the IT, and Eric's written the first two applications in Smalltalk. Uh, or as well, one of them written the entire thing in Smalltalk. He's been working on the Photo Manager application, uh, which is a pure Smalltalk application. So there's no compiled code anywhere, and you don't need to make it, you just pop in the app So, questions? Any questions? <laughs> Any questions at all? <laughs> so, yeah, what I was thinking is maybe we uh, um, uh, we uh, prepare a, a replacement talk for tomorrow and maybe uh, merge the, this one. Or a short version of this one with the uh, A20 status talk. I just got a question. What happens with the dynamic quality of Smalltalk if you compile it? Is it still there or will it get frozen somehow? I can't hear people who want I want to know if um, Smalltalk gets, if you compile it, if it's get, if it gets, if if if, if it's loses its dynamicality. Uh, yeah. So if you if you compile Smalltalk, what is the the impact of the on the dynamic aspects of the language? Uh, none, actually. None. All the dynamic stuff we get comes from runtime introspection. So you still have a message sending dynamically, you still have method replacement dynamically, you still have. Um, what else do you have? Okay. Uh, you still have all the same type of information. There's nothing lost in the If you have small talk questions, I can answer them uh, locally. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's a problem, and then maybe I will, uh, yeah, I will prepare a, a version of this talk for uh, tomorrow and try to uh, be able to uh, answer more questions uh, about it. Well. Okay, with that. Okay, well, thank you all for listening. Okay, thank you.